All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, this panel on PodVCon is all about sponsorships and affiliate marketing and marketing your podcast. And today I am joined by two other gentlemen uh, who have made a name for themselves as far as marketing their shows. And uh, they know a couple things. So let's go around the table first. Uh, my name is John. I am the host of The Basement Surge, a general discussion comedy show, and the host of From Podcast to Vodcast, where I help other podcasters turn their shows into a vodcast, uh, introducing uh, cameras and videos, and basically go from behind the mic to the front of the camera. Um, that's my stick, you know? So, uh, so Jan, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Hi, John, Ricardo, and everybody else. My name is Jenny Lunga. I'm joining you guys from Helsinki, Finland. I've been podcasting since 2014. I'm a consultant in the podcasting and lead generation space. I've hosted, we were talking with, with John before we started a handful of podcasts. My latest ones, one is called The Podcast Lab, which is a show uh, that it's all about podcasting. And then recently, I've launched a show that I'm co-hosting with my friend, client, and colleague, Luis Diaz. And that show is called Podcasting for Fun and Profits. And in addition to that, I've also shared my insights at podcasting events like Podcast Movement in the States. We are podcast in Australia. And I've also shared my insights on places like Forbes.com, Inc.com, Entrepreneur.com. And I've hosted my own virtual summit on podcasting for a couple of years. And I run an online community that is called Podcast Growth Mastermind that Forbes dubbed podcasting community to join. So I'm really neck deep into the podcasting space. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it really sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, uh, d tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Ricardo Zilueta. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, the reason I'm here today is because I have a startup in the influencer marketing space. And after I've kind of been getting involved with influencers and getting interviews on podcasts and stuff like that, I started realizing that it's actually an industry that no one's really looking at and um, helping monetize. Almost every single podcast I've been on was not monetized whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So basically, I the way I learned about this, I have an apparel company. And when I was dealing with influencers, uh, the things that I learned that really makes a transaction so long or a sponsorship not to happen is the lack of trust and lack of professionalism. And really, it's just because there's nothing helping the influencers out because I've learned that all the problems actually stem from the influencers, podcasters, and things like that. It's just that they don't know how to do it or what to even do because it's, the industry alone is very new. Even podcasting is, I know it's podcasting being around, but as far as monetizing and being a podcaster, mm -hmm. it's really new. It's blowing up like crazy right now because of COVID. Right. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much where I rub my understanding of uh, how to get influencer sponsorship because it's very similar because sponsorships or for influencer marketing really is just a way to borrow trust for in exchange for exposure. Right. And basically that's what podcasting uh would help you do so okay all right so uh let's stay on that for a little while actually because um yeah. podcasting has really blown up in the past year or so i'd say a past year or two uh main, mainly because of uh the quarantine so um because i noticed myself when trying to get any equipment like a lot of places are out of stock you know you can't get cameras you can't get microphones because everybody and their mother is becoming a podcaster now. so um so now I, it, it's it's funny because i see a lot of these uh companies the, these big time companies who are really turning more to podcasting nowadays because of what's happening um would you agree guys that uh you know that now major corporations are taking interest in podcasters and they're looking at podcasting as another market of advertising definitely so <clears throat> one thing i let's talk about why first right why are people getting into podcasting and a lot more businesses are really getting into it it's not just people that are you know trying to be influencers uh, business professional. So let's talk about why are they doing that? Because when you talk like this, I'm going to get to know John. I'm going to get to know Jan. The, the relationship we're building is freaking incredible. And okay. when you talk to your uh, fans and followers multiple times, especially John is the host, the, mul the all these videos that you're making, 
is making them feel like I know John. Oh, I've known him since like, you know, 2020, dude. Like I've been listening to him for five years or things like that. So now anything you say becomes trustworthy. Yeah. Because I built you've built that trust with me. And that's really why people are doing podcasting even more. Uh, there's actually businesses strictly teaching businesses to use podcasting to create that relationship and then creating that funnel. So yeah, so just that alone is is the why they're doing it. <clears throat> and then really it's just more uh the other people that are trying to be influencers that would like to uh right now they're indirectly monetizing. Right. right they're they're using the podcasting as a channel as a funnel i mean to mm -hmm. to to get leads and all that stuff but then after that it's really something else uh they're not monetizing this themselves unlike influencers and so that's where i've kind of have a different viewpoint okay okay so jan have you you said you've built multiple podcasts uh in the past um are any or all of them have been monetized yeah, that's a good question. Uh, not all of them. Some were for clients mm. and some were kind of side projects. But with a few of them, I have used them. And one in, in particular, the podcast lab that I mentioned earlier, mm. was launched with a very strategic goal in mind, which was uh, drawing consulting clients. So as I said, I do consulting in the podcasting and well, and podcast guesting spaces. Uh, or podcast guesting space as well. So there specifically, that podcast wasn't designed for anything but to showcase my expertise in order to, to draw consulting clients. I've used different uh, strategies to monetize the different podcasts. Mm -hmm. I've used affiliate marketing. I've used some kind of custom sponsorship approach that we I'm sure we're going to dive into. And then I've also used, as I said, more marketing to have people go from being a podcast listener to being in touch with me, hop on a call and then become consulting clients. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I just, do, do you guys believe that every type of show, every genre of show could potentially be monetized? Definitely. So to me, it's all about the valuable exposure. Uh, businesses are willing to pay for that. Uh, it just has to be worth it. And that's, these are the things I tell influencers. So it's very similar, right? People think like, oh, my past cast, I just started. So I only have this many followers and all that stuff. Yeah, that doesn't matter. I would love for you to, to promote my clothing brand. But how much are you charging? It's the only question I have. Because if it's worth it, I'm in. A dollar? Okay. Five bucks? Sure. It really depends. It has to equal the value you're providing. You see, the problem is a lot of influencers, and I'm, I'm going to mention influencers a lot because that's what I do, but it's very relatable to podcasting, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of them right now, they don't know how to price themselves because they're not thinking of themselves as a business because they understand right now they're using podcasting as a funnel to to drive them to other things. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you try to monetize the podcast or influencers trying to monetize their social media channels, your role changes. You're no longer an influencer. You're now a promoter because your sponsors are actually your clients, your customers, not your followers. Your followers become your product. That becomes your inventory, right? And so that's what you're offering. Look at how many people I can look, I can attract to see your brand. And so that becomes your 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 kind of value, right? But that's not the only value. You might be a, a great host with podcasting because your voice is awesome. You attract them, or you could be very beautiful and just just attract people because you know you just get people to see you. So there's really different levels of what kind of value you provide. But people or podcasters, influencers, they have to understand that you're a business. Your value doesn't go up and down according to your pride, mm -hmm. and according to sponsors' budget. I would hate going to a restaurant, get a steak, and then ask me, well, what's your budget? Wait, well, how much did he get his for? Well, right. he's a millionaire, so his was $1,000. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And so that's how influencers are pricing themselves. And podcasters, you need to know the same thing. Like, you're just like any other service provider. If you get a hairstylist, a tattoo artist, a tattoo artist doesn't charge more because you're a celebrity. My right. value is my value, period. Uh, how many followers do you have? How much engagement do you have? Things like that. That's what's going to determine your value um, and everything else. So if you're a celebrity, it doesn't even matter about the followers and this because you're like, 
it's Tom Cruise. I don't care <laughs> if he's wearing my stuff. I really don't care about the followers. Like, right. so it's those things. Yeah. Well, I, I also think that it, it's also about the bigger picture because let's say within your brand, you have, you, you do run a podcast, right? Uh, you can market the product on a podcast, but then you do uh, live shows twice a week, you know, on yeah. social media. Yeah. Okay. Or, you know, you have a huge following on Twitter and, and now Twitter is incorporating something like Clubhouse where, called Twitter uh, Spaces or something like that. And, mm. um, you know, you could just get in there and just really connect with your audience, you know? So yeah, there are so many possibilities now to connecting mm -hmm. with an audience and just... Uh, the possibilities of selling and promoting a product, really, you know, and and I think it, it when when a promoter look when when a company looks at that, they have to look at the whole package. Yeah, yeah. The beautiful uh, thing that you're doing, John, is because you're teaching people to go to vodcasting. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty of that. When I talk to podcasters, like, oh, you only do audio. You're right. very limited in what you can monetize. Uh, an intro, mid, and outro audio. That is it. Like that yeah. is that is it. There's nothing yeah. else you can do. It's audio. Right. But with visual, you can sell so many different things. So <clears throat> while you're doing the audio, you can do a, 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 a you know the same thing: intro, mid, and outro. Mm -hmm. Hey, but I can also do an image lay uh, a logo layover and put it right over here. I could also do a scrolling text. I mean, I see that we're using StreamYard, so you could yeah. do that. I could do a nice layover here for you. I could do a, a green screen background with your logo. There are right. so many possibilities and no one is doing it. But then again, it's because no one's thinking of themselves as a business and using mm -hmm. the medium as the way to provide that exposure. So no one is seeing it that way. So really it's all about, you have to change your perspective when you're trying to do. Are you trying to monetize the content? Are you trying to monetize an indirect business, but at the same time, it's like why not? Because if the the brand relates to the content you're talking about, like for like what we're discussing, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have uh, a people in this field in podcasting or a podcast tool to you know like a microphone. Let's say you know in between this, you can show a video. Hey, just a quick thing for my sponsor of the day, and put the microphone video and back to Ricardo and Jan. You know what I mean? So there's so many things that you can do. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with what what you said, Ricardo. I think one one of the biggest mistakes when it comes to monetization that independent podcasters make actually has to do with the lack of strategic thinking. So so many podcasters look at let's say Jolly Dumas to make an example and say, oh, okay, he's monetizing his podcast through sponsors. So if I just follow his footsteps, I'm going to get the exact same exposure. Doesn't matter that he has been doing that for a year. Doesn't matter that he has published thousands of episodes. I'm just starting now. Yeah, with a few episodes, I'm going to get to those thousands and thousands of downloads and I'm going to get the same outcome. And the problem with that approach is that by focusing only on the podcast, they may be leaving a lot of money on the table because they may have an email list. They may have right. an engaged Facebook group. You mentioned right. John mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, Ricardo, you uh, talked about the visual components. You could combine all of those and say, okay, my podcasts or podcast episodes may only get, let's say, 300 downloads per episode, which if you follow this traditional CPM model, you don't get nothing for that, basically. Right. However, I can say, okay, that's the of my entire digital real estate, that's the smallest thing I have to offer. I, however, I have many other things that are appealing. So now when you create your different packages, you could say, oh, with this package, you get the podcast, but you also get, uh, let's say, included in my weekly email newsletter. And even right. there, you can break it down even further and say, not all components of the email are the same. You could have a banner, a big banner or as a header at the top of the email you could include the sponsor as a PS, just the text That's or the right. name of the company. You could yeah. have a dedicated email where you talk about the sponsor. You can create videos like you, Ricardo, were talking about. So I think that so many independent podcasters are leaving a lot of money on the table because they don't think about their own context, thus the lack of critic or, or strategic thinking. Right. Had mm -hmm. they stopped looking, I'll make a, another practical example. If you're just getting started, and your podcast doesn't get many downloads, trying to get advertisers may not be the best route. Or you may get advertisers, but you were talking about earlier, Ricardo, 
a, a company may be very well interested in being a sponsor depends on what your price point is. However, as a podcaster, if you think, oh, I'm just getting started, I have very small numbers, what you could do instead is you could tap into affiliate marketing. Audible, for example, has an affiliate program for podcasters where you get a, spe- a custom link that you can share on your show. You can mention specific audiobooks or whatever. <clears throat> And every single time a person signs up using your link, they get a free 30-day trial and an audiobook of their choice, and you get $15. So if with the traditional CPM model, for a 1,000 listeners per episode, you can make around $40, $43 with the Audible trial platform. You may need three people to sign up, and you already make $45. Right. So you don't need... You don't need to have millions of people to get results. You need to really be strategic and look at your entire digital real estate because even if you're brand new to podcasting, chances are you have been doing or you had done something else, whether it's blogging, writing, speaking, social Mm -hmm. media. So start by looking, really map out everything you may have to offer to a potential advertiser, and then you can start making your packages. And and be as specific as possible. If you say, I have a Facebook group, I can promote you there. Be specific. How are you going to promote it? Is it text only post? Is it a post with an image? Is it a short video? Is it a live video? Perhaps you do a quick Q&A with the CEO of the company. You say, oh, I, I will add your logo in the header image of the Facebook group. Really be creative because you have so much to offer and there is so much that you may be overlooking yeah. just because you're looking at the big podcasters and trying to emulate their way to success. Right. Yeah, so, Jan, uh, you, you bring up a good point is because, you know, if, if you look at any successful person, any millionaire, let's say, or, you know, any successful entrepreneur, um, they're not getting their income from one source. OK, it's all a bunch of different sources. OK, whether they have a podcast, they wrote a book, they're doing a video, you know, they have a successful YouTube channel. So it's everything uh, funnels into one, I want to say, you know, so you, you have to think of it like that, because when you're approaching sponsors, you, you have to tell them the whole package of what you you can offer and, and what your reach is, not just the podcast. And may I, may I add one quick thing, guys? Mm hmm. Another thing you could do if you're just getting started is just make a list of every single tool. If you have a business connected to your podcast, make a list of every single tool you're using for your business. Invoicing tool, email marketing tool, social media marketing tool, anything you're hosting, microphone brand, make a list of everything. And then you can reach out and actually you can start and see, do they have an affiliate program? Yes, great. Start tapping into that you can reach out to the companies and say, hey, I'm thinking, or I've just started a podcast. I, I have my affiliate link. Can I refer to you guys as, as a sponsor of the show? Can I make reference to you? Obviously, you want to be careful with all the, the, the regulation, uh, regulations and legislations, mm-hmm. but that could be another avenue to really get started as a, and tap into the low-hanging fruits you may have when it comes to monetizing your podcast already available. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with the affiliate, right? And definitely uh, beneficial when you have a more following. It's un- it's harder to sustain when you have smaller following. But just like Yanni was saying, that doesn't matter. Again, I have to always go back to this. You have to think of yourself as a business. The local restaurant that you have, they may have the best food, but if you know nothing about them, you'll never he- go there. You'll never hear. So as a podcaster, when you're starting out. Act like a freaking business. What does the local restaurant do or any clothing company do when they launch? They provide shit for free. Why? Why do they do that? Because they want to start getting loyal people. Well, you as a podcaster, you're saying like, well, I don't have a lot of listeners yet. Then give it away for free right. because you can. Does it hurt? It only makes it better. And guess what you get out of that? More exposure. Hey, I'm going to promote Coca-Cola and this and that. Do you think they're not going to promote your podcast now? Right. Do you think you're not going to promote a local brand, a local restaurant, someone that you feel that uh, resonates with your audience in some way, shape, or form, some kind yeah. of microphone? Do it for free, especially yeah. when you're getting a free product. Like, hey, I'll do that for free. You know, uh, yeah. It's hard to get products, obviously, but if you could just mention 
do it for free, but make sure you know them. Don't don't play this fake, you know, move that influencers do and pretend that they were, right. you know, uh, the biggest fan. It's ever. all about authenticity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's authenticity. Yeah. You know, don't just go Actually, like, oh yeah, product, you know, yeah. Don't just start yeah. saying like, thank you, Poland Spring. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, they found you with <laughs> with your five listeners, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to what you said, Ricardo, I think that's a very good point, and I would add to that and say. When you're making your hit list of potential companies you would like to advertise your podcast, if you say, oh, what Ricardo just said sounds like a great plan, I want to do it for free, I would say, before you send the emails, you make the calls, actually take a look at what does the company do online? Why? Because they may have, for example, let's say a blog and they have a column there. So that could be a, a source of exposure for you. Perhaps they do a series of Facebook Lives and you could be showcased there. Maybe they have just started a clubhouse club where they run a room on a regular basis you could get featured there so while you may provide them with free exposure on your show they could pay you back with exposure for what you do so that exposure for example be featured on a facebook live be featured in in a blog post or something like that could actually drive a lot of traffic toward your podcast i'll make you a practical example for my Facebook group, which is called Podcast Growth Mastermind, I, it was mentioned, I said in the intro that Forbes dubbed it as one of the podcasting communities to join. That blog post was published in 2017. So four years ago at the time we are, we are doing this. And to this day, I have people who joined the group because of that blog post, because I have three questions I ask people. One of them is, where did you hear about the group? And many people say, a Forbes article, a Forbes article, a Forbes article. And I know exactly what article they are talking about. So doing something like you were talking about, Ricardo, could be very effective. Don't think about short term. Think about long term and the bigger picture, as you, John, were saying uh, a few minutes ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think po podcasting is a marathon anyway. You know, you're not going to get famous overnight. Yeah. Uh, so you really got to look at the long term picture and uh, strategize your marketing yeah. appropriately. But uh, yeah. you know, let's uh, let's stick on affiliate marketing for a second because um, I I think w when I first started podcasting, I went straight away to affiliate marketing. You know, I was like, let me just try it. I signed up with one company and uh, and it worked out pretty well. Um, but you know, it, the like it's funny because you start off when you're small, you start off with one company and you get a taste of what it could be like, you know, and then you're like, all right, well, what else can I join? You know, wh where else can I be? And, uh, you, you know, so I compiled a little list. Uh, tell me what you guys think. So now for affiliate marketing, these companies are all have affiliate programs. And I think each one of these is appropriate for podcasters and vodcasters the same. Okay, you can get uh, tech from either one of these or services. And uh, Amazon has the um, the associate program, which I think everybody should be signed up for, uh, because no matter what you're using on set or uh, as a microphone or any camera tech, whatever, uh, anything could be found through Amazon. So uh, I think anybody, every, every podcaster should be signed up to, to Amazon. But Squarespace, Fiverr, and Squadcast, um, those are all uh, services that they provide. Like Squarespace will give you the website for your podcast. Fiverr, if you're not design savvy, uh, then you can hire somebody for as little as $5 to design a logo or you know do a banner or something. Uh, and Squadcast allows you to do things like this. So uh, what do you guys think about this list? I'm thinking you were sponsored by these companies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Use the code. I look what you've done there. That was nice and subtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, that's an example. But that also, oh, what, what else do you guys think should be on this list? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's funny. But that's how it would work, right? Um, <laughs> right. No, I think it's, it's affiliate marketing is definitely something, you know, it's uh, lucrative. It's something you could definitely do, especially when you have the following. I mean, man, you take advantage of it. Uh, if you're not getting a sponsor or whatever, then go to affiliate marketing until you get a sponsor to, to come in. Because mm -hmm. are you losing anything? You're only gaining if you actually sell. And the more it resonates with your audience, 
uh, your content and everything else, it, it it's a good thing to do because it just lets them know like, okay, well, it seems like every time I talk to John, there's always some kind of discount something about podcasting. So, hey, let me check it out. What's the next deal, John, you know? So right. I think it's not a bad thing at all. It's just uh, as you're growing, like I mentioned before, without the following, it's definitely much harder um, to, to kind of go. It's the same thing with influencer marketing, uh, with, you know, <clears throat> social media, uh, influencers where they think like, well, I don't have 10,000, you know, a hundred thousand followers yet. Like, well, you know, that pizza place down the street would love 5,000 followers love. Yeah. Now imagine getting a hundred of you in your local area. Well, now you're a powerful person. So it's really, it, it's just all about the type of content. And if it's going to be worth it as a sponsorship for the sponsors, then that's really it. But affiliate marketing is awesome because it doesn't hurt anyone. It's, it's, a lot of brands obviously love it because there's no cost to them other than like, you know, uh, basically just sharing the commission or whatever. And mm -hmm. that's it. So both sides are really, you know, are, are well off because yeah, I don't have, I don't care about your fake followers. I don't care. It's like, it's all about sales. So, you know, it works out for both. Right, right, right. I think content here is the key word because for example, something like Amazon, they have pretty much anything you can think of. So you could promote a lot of different things. However, I think that if you want to increase the chances of affiliate marketing work well for your podcast, I would encourage you to do a couple of things. The first one is to look at the type of show you host and the type of uh, content you share. For example, if you share more uh, informational or educational content, it may be easier for you to mention a tool. For example, in my case, let's say, if I were to start a podcast about lead generation, and I would talk about a CRM tool, so a customer relationship management tool, if I were to pick a specific tool and I would share tips about that on a regular basis, I would say people, if you want to put into practice what I've talked about, you can start out, start out for free for the first month if you use this, this coupon code or if you use this link. Yeah. And as I keep talking about the tool, well, actually, I don't really talk about the tool per se, but I talk about how the tool is helping me do different things. People are going to realize that, oh, wow, I was actually looking for a CRM tool. And the one Jan mentions sounds like a very good pick. If you want to add to that, I would encourage you. This is something you can't really decide. But if you find a tool that has an affiliate program that is tied to a monthly membership, for example, where it's not just a one-time commission, but they say, if somebody signs up for uh, for us through your affiliate link, you will get, for example, 20% each month or 30% each month. Now mm -hmm. you can predict and say, yeah, if I have, let's say, five people who join every month, I will make X dollars from tool one. And then you can replicate that model and say, okay, now let me shift the focus from CRM tool to uh, a tool for, I don't know, for video SEO or for podcast audio editing or for anything for, for creating visual content on the go. Whatever kind of industry you're in, you can really find a few affiliate programs to tap into and make that a lucrative thing. You could even sign up for competitive tools or competitors mm -hmm. because, you know, you say, yeah, I want to sign up for both and you create reviews or comparisons and you say, okay, guys, I've been using both of these tools. I'm going to share what I like about A, what I don't like so much about A and so forth, the same for B and then compare the two tools and say, if you want to check them out, I have these links and it can work out like a charm. So I think it's important that you think about your content first and foremost, and the more you can connect a specific tool or platform or whatever to the content itself, the easier it's going to be to make affiliate marketing work for you. As I said, especially if their affiliate program, it's something that has a recurring income for you as an affiliate. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but um, so if you're first starting a podcast and you, or if you're just small growing your show, um, you may want to consider signing up for a couple of affiliate programs. Um, but Ricardo, you were saying that you think that a, a starter podcast should stay local within their area and pitch to the businesses in, in their local area. Because I know with, uh, with my show, The Basement Surge, we're pretty famous here in Brooklyn. 
Like I can look at my stats and I can see that, okay, I, I'm pretty good here in Brooklyn. So a lot of my listeners are in Brooklyn. So I should just go to businesses in my area uh, and talk to them about partnering up. So is, uh, is that something that you, you, uh, you would do? So it's just something I recommend. Uh, it depends. What are you trying to build? Are you trying to be a five-star cuisine restaurant or are you trying to be a hot dog stand? Like it really depends. So like he was saying before, it's all about the long term. Actually, what you were saying before, it, it, I'm glad that you do it because I deal a lot with mental health. And you have to see a future version of your podcast. Um, that's how you determine where you're going to go. Because if you can't visualize what you're going to be, you're not going to know what to do. It's the same thing I tell influencers. Well, who are you? What are you trying to do for sponsors? What niche? What type of audience are you building? Because until you know that, you're never going to know. You're going to keep taking these small steps and go the wrong turn every time. Because why? People that are lost, the first thing I ask them, where are you going? Well, if you don't know that, then you're always going to take the wrong turn. Yeah. So you always want to look at the future version of that. So anyway, when you talk about the local thing, a lot of influencers dismiss the idea of local sponsors, but you can make so much money from it. Um, <clears throat> people are trying to get these e-commerce, you know, like you're in Brooklyn now, you're trying to get an e-commerce store in California, Texas. It's like, dude, do you know how many sponsors you have in Brooklyn? There's so many. Here's the problem. The problem that's happened, same thing is happening in the influencer space is very common. Like I mentioned before, in your, in your, um, what I like about the podcast is, is that the professionalism is actually there. Influencers, they have to learn that still. They don't know how to be. So really it's all about, I have to, what I have to fix is the lack of trust, right? The reasons transactions don't happen is because I don't freaking trust John. That's why I haven't sponsored him yet. Cause I don't know one transparency. What are you going to do, John? I don't see any menu. I don't see the pricing. I don't see your background. I know nothing about you. So that's why I don't even ask, hey, John, how much for a break to, to get an exposure through you? Mm -hmm. So that's one. Number two is the credibility. John can say, I worked with this, this, that, and I'm this background and this. How the hell do I know that? I have yeah. no clue. Same thing with Amazon, right? But guess what they did to fix that? Ratings and reviews. Mm -hmm. Now, we never shop without looking at ratings and reviews. In fact, we hate being the first one to review. Right? It's like, ah, oh, man, like, all right. So that's the, the second step. And then the third step to build trust that we can do is basically creating a marketplace is accountability. How do I know John is really going to do what he says he's going to do? Because I give away clothes and they run away on me. I've given money and they run away on me because they know there's zero consequences for it. Right. So one of the consequences that can be applied is the ratings and reviews, right? That's why we have that on our platform. It's called paid exposures, any kind of exposure. That's why I got into podcasts. I'm like, dude, that's great exposure. In fact, it's so much more intimate podcasting. It's not just like a one-off picture, right? right. Um, <clears throat> but it's really the accountability. How do I know John's going to do it? Ratings and reviews definitely help with that. We're in the back of Uber now with straw and candy because of it. They want five stars. Not two, not three, not four, five stars. So they do anything you got. You have mint on your pillow for Airbnb. Why? Right. Yeah. Because they know the next customer is going to be so much easier when I have five stars and even just 10 sponsors. So if John has 10 sponsors, five stars, what do you think the 11th sponsor is going to feel about being advertised through John? Right. It goes up. But the best thing about the accountability is what we do is we accept the money from the sponsors, but we don't pay out to the promoters until you fulfill the promotion. Mm -hmm. So the sponsor is really safe going like, oh, so if he tries, doesn't do anything, I get a refund. Yup. And then you as a promoter are looking at me going like, yeah, but is he going to pay? Like, dude, John, I already have the money. You just go get five stars. So both are already, there's already trust. No one's going to run away with anything. And there's accountability on both ends. I actually allow promoters to also um, rate the sponsors only because I don't want them using that as a, a tool to manipulate you or anything. And like what we were talking before, when you build that trust, efficiency happens. That's why you're able to get Airbnb like this. You've never been there. And you're getting a house that you, you're going to stay at that you've never been to ever. Right. right? So why would we do that? Why would you act? Why would you do that? Well, because of all those things in place, when you have transparency, imagine, because right now podcasting and just like influencers, 
they're like Airbnb with just pictures. That's it. I know right. nothing about it. I don't know how much you're going to charge because you haven't treated it like a business yet. You know, you're still kind of indirectly funneling people and that's all you're doing is using it as a funnel rather than actually using it to monetize it. So when I say start off with your local place, it's just where you're going to start. As you grow, you might be going, all right, now I'm going to do the tri-state area. And all of a sudden you get so big because everyone's promoting it. You become a national. So your brand start getting better. Not, not because you don't care about the locals. It's just that they can't afford you anymore. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you can exactly. you can leverage your podcast even not just as the let's say marketing platform for the advertiser, but you can even say to to tap into what you were saying, Ricardo, you can say, all right, let me actually interview the CEO of the advertisers. Let the audience or other potential advertisers hear from his or her words what their experience sponsoring the show was like exactly. you can do it on an entire episode you can say let's hop on a zoom call i record let's do it as a video I, we just have a conversation and and you share how the experience was and then yeah. when you're reaching out to the next potential sponsors you can say oh here is what some of our current sponsors or past sponsors had to say about their experience working with us so you really get to leverage the human side of things, meaning instead of just having a written review or testimonial, you have it as audio or even better as video so that people can see, can hear and can see that, okay, this is not just a random person that I wonder, is that a real picture? Is that a fake review? But it's somebody that I right. can hear from and I can right. see and I can tell that, yeah, this person sounds so excited and he or <clears throat> they paid to promote this uh, to to advertise on this podcast or to sponsor this podcast, we want to be next because we want to experience that yeah. kind of excitement and get those results yeah. that they yeah. got. And, and that's what's tough also because when it comes to ratings and reviews, what makes it powerful to have a marketplace involved is because just like Amazon, if you can, anyone can review, they're getting fake reviews now. So you need a platform that only gets reviews from actual transactions. Right. So only sponsors are giving you the reviews on our platform. And that's why the trust goes up because you, you might have just to look, hey, can I get you know a quick review? Da, da, da. Just I, you never even work together, you know. Yeah. So you're showing that review. Well, on ours, it better it has to be a transaction before you even get a review. You know, obviously there's gonna be people trying to manipulate the system, like you know, yeah. like you'll pretend, pretend you're sponsored. But on our platform, you get a you get to look at who the sponsors are and figure out who they are and this. So it's a harder to, to, to fake that. And that's what I don't like in the influencer industries because they're so consumed with the idea of making so much money that they're cheating their way up, yeah. you know, with fake <clears throat> followers, fake engagement now. You know, it's just like, oh, you guys got to stop because all you're doing with fake engagements is trying to manipulate the sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you guys have some valid, valid points. But uh, uh, so this person had a question. Uh, what is an average price to start charging or proposing to sponsors? <laughs> That's easy. You just start. Prices are not determined by you. They're determined by the supply and demand in a the problem in the marketplace is that there's no transparency. So you can't compare John's price to this guy's price. That's right. the problem. And that's what we're trying to solve in the industry. The more there's transparency, the better. Because if, if you went on Amazon and you can't see anyone's pricing, well, well, what's your budget for this microphone? Holy crap, this sucks. Like, imagine going to a, a mall, going shopping, and you have zero pricing on anything. Like, mm -hmm. wait, this is 200 This is a 50 bucks. Why? Right. I, I don't... I don't, now you have to talk. And that's why it takes weeks or months to finalize transactions with influencers. And that's why we're able to do it within 48 hours because we apply the transparency, credibility, and, and, and accountability. When you have all three of those, it provides, it's, it's really just all about trust. Because if, if I worked with you before, it's easier to work with you again and again and again to the point that like, dude, here's the money. Like I'll just pay you up front and we're good. But most people, that's why they love these marketplaces. Like if you try to pay some Uber uh, uh, outside of Uber, they're like, nah, I'm good, man. Just just pay through the thing. Same thing with Airbnb. Like, nah, just just pay through because I'm protected and I want my ratings from you if I did a if I did a good job. So it's actually been more beneficial for me in the long term than me trying to accept your uh, extra five dollars today. I'd rather get 
you know, thousands of dollars later on because you gave me a five star rating and this and that and because you went through the system. And so that's what our platform does. It actually our mission is to empower anyone to be able to monetize valuable exposure. Uh, like what Jan was uh, Jan was mentioning before, uh, just because your podcast isn't uh, ha having a, it's brand new, but your Instagram, you have like 10,000 followers. You have this. It's like, dude, you know, you can monetize by saying like, I will promote here your podcast. I will. And that's why what John is doing, anyone that's listening, watching this right now, take freaking advantage of going video with your podcast. Yep. Because there's more eyeballs on there. Most of your friends are not going to find your podcast or, you know, people's friends. It, it's very difficult because especially now there's so many podcasts. But if yeah, you sign, already sign up have my, a uh, my course at vodsquad.live. No, good. Nice. <laughs> 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 so, yes, yeah, it's, it's like click the link below. <laughs> But those are the things that you can take advantage of. So as far as pricing goes, I just want to go back to that. You mm -hmm. really just want to start. So for example, it's really just has to be worth it. Uh, on our platform, what makes it hard is because nothing is getting captured for it, right? When you, like I mentioned before, you got to give it for free. The best part is when you give it away for free, but you're getting a ratings. Let's say John just started using our platform and gave away 10 sponsorships right? And said like, hey, I'll promote you local business. And in the local, here's the advantages of going local. They all know each other. This store knows this store and this location and this street. They all know each other. The trust is so much easier because John's from freaking Brooklyn, dude. So everyone's going to go like, oh yeah, you're, I live here. Oh, no way. So the trust is so built in easier. Uh, that, that is the niche. You don't even have a niche because John likes to get clothes like everyone else. He likes to eat like everyone else. The only niche you need is being local. You don't need to be in a fashion niche. You don't need to be an entrepreneur niche. No, I'm in the local niche. I eat at your pizza place every freaking week. So I'm going to go over there. But <clears throat> it's really just the value you're providing. But the best part is just like any um, look at web developers on freelance websites. They do not charge here. They charge here. Then they get a ratings and reviews. Okay, let me increase that a little bit. And ratings and reviews. Okay, let me raise that a little bit. Because no one is going to question when you have a five-star 50 sponsors, let's say. Mm -hmm. Are you going to question the pricing? They're going to go like, yeah, but this person got five stars for what they do. And only because they saw there's a history of performance. And that builds a lot of trust, a lot of trust. And so that's what we're trying to do. So as far as pricing goes, you just have to price. You actually have to go lower than what you would like. Again, you have to think in the future, how much would you like to be getting in the future? Well, you have to start here. You can't just go, dude, $1,000 a podcast. So because you have 100 listeners, $1,000, huh? Really? Right. But you're not going to charge anything and wait until you can charge $1,000? That's insane. Why don't you start at five dollars because you're yeah. gonna get so much value with the ratings and reviews and and content uh they're gonna uh get you more followers because they're gonna share you and things like that so it's really valuable that way yeah yeah and i also i also think that i mean you can just do a quick google search you will find any kind of average price but another thing i would encourage you to consider is this if you say well i, I wish i had something i could use as a benchmark you can actually use your costs as a benchmark. And here's what I mean. You can make a list of all the costs you have related to your podcast. It can be the hosting, could be anything, everything you're using. If you have a business related to your podcast, you can make a similar list for all the costs you have for your business. Mm -hmm. Say to yourself, okay, what are my monthly costs? What are my yearly costs? And then start, as you were saying, Ricardo, we should take it step by step as we are climbing the ladder. And the way you could do that, you could say, okay, my goal for the next quarter is to start make money so I can cover, let's say, one third of my podcasting related ex expenses. Once you nail that consistently, you say, all right, now I want to cover half of my podcasting related expenses. Once you nail that, you say, all right, now I want to cover three fourths. Then you cover all of them and then you start to profit from, from hosting the podcast. I think so many independent podcasters, as you were saying, Ricardo, are just waiting until they have the numbers right. whereas if they just said okay let's say my goal is to start to cover my hosting costs they can be only 10 bucks a month but when you start 
to be, when your podcast start to pay for itself, yeah. you get a different approach versus oh, I wish that one day I could just make money so I don't have all of these expenses. No, just start to look at what those expenses are and start right here, right now. As you said, Ricardo, even if you just charge something that you would think, God, this is ridiculous, mm -hmm. focus and say, okay, I don't care about the price at the beginning. I just want to cover some expenses and I don't want to get reviews. Once I get a few reviews, I can say, all right, now I'm going to increase my price. I'm going to cover a bigger chunk, chunk of my expenses and so forth. So if you that ask the question are yeah, wondering what is the number, just start to make a list of the expenses you have and make a goal of covering whatever percent that you want to start with. Yeah. And once you cover that consistently, you can say, all right, now I'm, I'm aiming to the next level, cover half of them, all of them, and cover all of them and more and making money beyond just covering the expenses. And that if I think that if more podcasters had that approach, more independent podcasters would actually be monetizing their podcast. It may take a while before you get to the higher levels of the ladder, but you will have the experience of what it means to monetize your podcast, to have conversations, negotiations, and that goes a long way then when it's time for you to have conversations with sponsors that are ready to pay thousands of dollars. For, I'm a music person, I love live music. It is as if you're just starting playing and you think you could be playing in huge stadiums in a couple of months. That's probably yeah. not gonna happen. You wanna <laughs> say, I'm gonna start on the local venues, I'm gonna do yeah. basking, I'm gonna start on the local venues and take it from there. Yeah. Right, right. All right, guys, well, uh... I think that's about it. You guys have uh, given us some great pieces of advice. You guys sure know your stuff. Uh, I thank you very much for coming on the uh, the panel today. Uh, we'll, let's go around again. You know, give us uh, the promo for your show, whatever you're working on. Go ahead, Jan. <laughs> oh, am I going first? All right. Yep. So yes. <clears throat> um, I, I I haven't really been doing any podcasting shows for that, but I'm helping podcasters kind of. Uh, it's a new channel that we've created. You can uh, check us out at paidexposure.com. Uh, it's the whole, the platform is completely free. Uh, so you can create a profile there, uh, put your background, set your pricing, and we actually help you with the pricing there. Uh, we, help, we help you throughout the way uh, because we, we made it so that uh, it's, it's in our best interest to actually help you because nobody makes anything until you get a sponsor. So, you know, reach out to us. So go to paidexposure.com and try it out. Awesome. Jan? Yeah, for me, thank you, John and, and Ricardo. This was a lot of fun. For me, if anybody has more questions, whether it's related to something we covered here or something that came to mind related to the topic of this session, but we didn't have time to cover. I would say just get in touch. You can go to my site. I added it here, janilunga.com. Just go to the contact page or just go to janilunga.com for a slash contact and just send me a message, send me your questions. And I'm always happy to, to help if I can or anyways, to get back uh, as soon as possible to, to share my two cents on anything that we cover today or beyond. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, and of course, if anybody uh, wants to reach out to me, you can head on over to vodsquad.live, uh, where you can get my course on how to become a vodcaster. So, uh, all right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you next time.